Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap, my name is Pixelriffs, our writer is LoyXP, captions on this video were provided by Liara, and this recap almost didn't happen the way they usually happen, thanks to a combination of a sunny day, an internet cable, and an electric hedge trimmer. But fortunately that situation was swiftly resolved before I had to ask Sloy to do all the work, so we get to recap the Hermitcraft just like always. For a different perspective though, check out Mumbo's video this week, in which he tours the only season of Hermitcraft he wasn't a part of. The Season 1 World Download really shows us how far Hermitcraft and Minecraft itself has come since there were only four wood types and we'd only just figured out how to grow grass in the nether. Some things, however, will never change. I knew it! I knew, I knew this was a Joe Hills thing. How is this- how is Joe Hills still like this? <laughs> So with the past duly blasted, let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. And you know what, no it does look like a granite build, there's bushes everywhere. Starting with False Symmetry, who rebalances her TCG deck only for a new card game to show up on the horizon. Zombie Cleo has been hard at work putting together the town to play out a round of Blood on the Clock Tower with their Hermitcraft friends, and you may remember False being the one tasked with building a clock tower to put blood on. And hopefully Cleo doesn't mind that because of course uh, there are colours involved with other things, but I shouldn't be too confusing because this does look quite a lot different than the houses do. As promised, False built up a central build for the town to hold their voting meetings at, or whatever you do in medieval times to kill off the werewolves. And Cleo takes the tower for their own and puts a game master board under it to keep track of who amongst the players are in fact the aforementioned werewolves in the first place. Um, here is the what's known as the grimoire. This is basically the area where I'll go, I'll add signs that say, so for example, say this had a token and something happened to that token and then I'd put next to it uh, like a thing that had happened to that, that particular player. Overall, the town is coming together, if only to be torn apart in the drama unfolding. You do not know you are the drunk. You think you are another townsfolk character, but you are not. And in the meantime, more drama deploys within the dueling museums. Cleo actually finds their crown parked lovingly outside Ijevin's house and takes no guesses to figure out who left it there. Uh, yeah, and do you want to uh, just get your own back with Cub? Oh yeah, 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 let's, let's go, <laughs> let's go buy a bunch of stuff. As a result, Cleo and Jevin unite to teach Cubfan135 a lesson or two about misplaced artifacts and re-easter the easter egg collection Cub has in his museum. The dragon egg is gone too! What the world is happening, dude? Could this situation between Cub and Cleo make it to where Cleo and I don't become mortal enemies anymore? I don't know. Mercifully, the two only hide the miniaturized hermits across Cub's own museum halls, though the complex is quite sprawling by now and it's still a chore to find all of them. Such a chore, in fact, that Cub never finds the stress monster one and just grabs another stress egg from a chest stash. Hey, there's a stress egg. Let's go. Brand new stress egg. Found out near stress's base. Perfect. I'm gonna hide one up here. Oh yeah, you definitely <coughs> can't see that one at all. <laughs> so evil. Cautiously, Cub now makes it a point to plant a cherry grove around his garden of buildings borrowed, perhaps so it's not too obvious from the outside that they're there. For their ability to position items, Cleo is called upon by Rendog, hoping to get a favour for his record disc store. Have you ever made a sausage? I have not ever made a sausage, <laughs> no. Willing to make his music shop as pretty as possible, Ren asks Cleo to position the CDs on invisible armor stands so everyone can see D's records. Oh, that I looks so that. awesome! That's yeah. no oh, that's problem. What do we think in price-wise for a job like this? This is this is the uh, what what quote can you give me for this this work? I mean, when I need people, I need warm bodies. Sure, <laughs> I will I will give you my body for an hour, in. As payment. That's not what I asked. Rendog's own minigame speeds to its finish with a glorious stretch of pure speed lane made mostly of blue ice, which does not stop the naturally occurring polar bears from wandering onto the tracks as a freebie obstacle for the racers. It doesn't help either that with some of the terrain not yet loaded, it does kind of look like you're speeding towards a solid ice wall at one point there. Having blasted his way through that, Ren does actually Finland drift through the racetrack for our and his enjoyment, and it promises to be a fast, if not very furious, ride indeed. And it's going to be really cool seeing multiple hermits just trying to pass each other through here. It is hard to tell if XB Crafted is much upset about Joe Hill's breaking his or spy game with his quick thinking, 
but he does offer Joe an extra free round on the tweaked rules that specify which way you are and aren't allowed to look. Any games where you played where you counted the arrow, uh, you get a full oh. refund, and those scores, oh. unfortunately, do not count. Well, thank you, thank you for the refund. Um, right. uh, so I, I when, when I stumbled onto that, I was like, oh my gosh, XP is a game design <laughs> genius. I thought that was brilliant. Now, so, I, that would have been brilliant, but it was okay. just an oversight. His own site in the meantime drifts to Cub Fans Museum, since the place is essentially a playground with 20-something Easter eggs possibly hidden in it. While XB doesn't yet find much but where to submit his misprinted TCG card, he does discover Kirilson hovering on a balloon around the central park or pillar with some curious and mysterious dialogue. You didn't buy those. What are you doing, guy? What do you mean it's it's an experiment in perfect? What are you talking about? You're, you're, you're at the perfect weight. You're not even using the right hand, man. Everybody knows you're left-handed. Perhaps it's telling that the oars in the arrow aren't part of the intended strategy when the guy who puts them there doesn't count them in his first round. Vintage Beef helped decorate Oar Spy but didn't want to place the oars himself to boost his score, but then built the arrow out of ore blocks to advertise the game so you'd figure he'd remember they were there. You guys are probably seeing stuff that I'm not, and it's driving me crazy. Perhaps he was blinded by how well lit it was in there after Exhibit Crafted kept putting lighting on the lighting so you can see while you see. Oh, you put a torch on the glowstone. <laughs> Is this intentional? Are you marking it for some reason? <laughs> what are you doing? But the minigames don't stop there as Beef reveals his latest card game spin-off based on another popular franchise. It's a Hermitcraft TCG Hunger Games, hereafter referred to as HTCGHG, or more succinctly, HATURHA! Beginning at the central circle, a group of players will explore a small archipelago in search of TCG Hermit and Effect cards they must bring back five at a time to build a deck. PvP is allowed during this process, definitely making it one of the more competitive draft modes we've seen from a card game. Once the decks are assembled and filled out with item cards, the tournament begins. Beef has only laid the foundations of the experience so far, but that includes a respawn room where felled contestants can return to the fight, and it shouldn't be long before people are literally fighting over the hottest cards. All it needs to incentivize the Hermits is a trophy, and what better inspiration than the TCG wing of Cub Fans Museum? Okay. Gotcha. Yep. That's a good simulation. Well, the Scarland part of the server has been getting increasingly more inspiring, and Good Times with Scar is about ready to welcome the visitors, given that he's now finally put in an entrance to the park. In an impressive time lapse, Scar raises the ticket booths at the other end of the Scarland main street, lined up perfectly with the main square and the castle's peak. But not with Grian's Stargate floating rock portals, unfortunately. Too bad even by the very tip of it he can't escape his neighbor's announcement system. And look at how cool this looks. I the system of the great perimeter <sighs> will have dire consequences. No, oh, you're gonna have dire consequences if I see you again, Doc. Well, it turns out Scar won't be recruiting Doc M to install one like that at his base after all, since Doc is not the one winning the coveted Scarland Redstone Engineer position. No, the 32 diamonds per week and a customized hard hat are going to the man in the audience with a very real beard. I sure nailed did. It. Whatever you need. I didn't actually care about that. I only care that you looked up Bob Gurr and watched the Imagineering special. <laughs> oh, okay. I did. Oh, yep. I can learn Redstone later. No. <laughs> Redstone's a secondary That's... issue here in the park. Yeah. And finally, the handyman of the happiest place on Hermitcraft gets to work. Impulse SV is delighted to find he's got the job, and even more excited to learn the company hat comes with built-in facial hair. Scar immediately gives Impulse a chin scratcher, asking for an entrance turnstile at the grand entrance to the Scarland Park, and clarifying that it should be centered on the entrance, unlike how some people build. But if you've been paying attention, you'll know Impulse already figured out the basic mechanics of the design a couple of weeks back. So he mocks up a fresh ticket booth with sound effects, armor stands providing a display that changes from red to green when it lets you through, and a pair of reanimated corpses ushering you into the park. It's the realistic touches that really bring the magic. You're holding stuff already. Sorry, you don't get the job. It was part of the part of the interview. It makes sense that Impulse wants to really earn his wages, though. After all, he's got an extra mouth to feed back home. The great furnace in his forge is basically a lava-powered grumbot now. Its name is Paul, and pretty soon he might be given emotions. No Impulse, this is how it starts! The, this actually looks like a face, and I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to unsee it now, but... You see the eyes there, crying lava, and the obvious mouth here. 
And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP, and my name is Pixel Riffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.